Atkins Fellow. Well, uh, this work? <laughs> Does this work? Can you hear me? Good evening, everyone. Um, today we're here to talk about something that affects us all, climate change. Um, today marks a very pivotal moment in time. Um, the decisions that we make now have an impact on future generations. Um, climate change isn't just an environmentalism issue, it's a social justice issue, it's an economic issue, and it's also a moral imperative. Um, as someone who prides itself on influence and responsibility, um, what an honor it is to be here to talk about this topic. MIT, thank you for having me. Um, Today we're gonna to talk about the crossover and intersection between environmentalism, social justice, and education um, in combination with raising awareness, leveraging your platform and influence, and investing in a sustainable future. But let me be clear, I think we're in a little bit of a crisis. Um, you know, this isn't just fiction, this is reality. You know, this isn't TikTok, and some of these things are happening on our watch. Um, I was taught that the justice of all human well-being is all-encompassing. Um, my grandmother taught me the importance of education. She also taught me the importance of recycling. Um, she would get upset if I threw like my water bottles in the wrong trash, and she also made me like pick up trash on our walks to the park. Um, as a seven-year-old, I would question her, um, but this had an impact on my journey. She also had a garden where metaphorically I learned to plant seeds and nourish the soil. This also had an impact on my journey, uh, which led me to communities and organizations such as Habitat for Humanity, um, where I was joined by a bunch of other young people, just like you all, who had a, a passion for climate change. And now I'm here um, at the Day of Climate event at MIT, speaking about the effects of environmentalism, and I hope I'm making my grandmother proud. One of the more concerning effects of climate change is the weather patterns. Um, floods, droughts, heat waves are all examples of these events. These events um, put, the, put pressure on the infrastructure of our community, the infrastructure of our society, the infrastructure of our uh, economic and health systems, and they make vulnerable populations uh, a little bit more vulnerable who necessarily don't have the, the chance to defend themselves. Uh, this is inequity. This is a call to action for all of us and a major concern. I believe that environmentalism and climate change isn't just um, something that we should think about. It's also an evolution of our thought process from serving our ego systems to helping our ecosystems from the understanding of footprint to the embracing of your soul print, you know, the concerns, the cause, the consequences of greed and capitalism, from the products we use to the rivers we poison. My question is globally: um, Is it clean energy if we leave dirty footprints? Education and awareness is key. A lot of people have a hard time seeing that climate change is affecting our day-to-day -day lives. They see it as something distant. But the reality is that climate change is already here. Our air, our oceans, our forests are already being compromised. These aren't just social media events. We've already seen the, the, the fires in California to the hurricanes in, in the Caribbean. Education and preparation is key. Um, the disruption of ecosystems and environments are imminent. And as a society, because of the awareness, I believe that we are ill-prepared. But I'm optimistic because education has the power to transform societies. It always has. It's no coincidence that the solutions to environmental problems and challenges come from places like this and young people and young minds like you all here today. Um, this year, I had the pleasure of meeting one of my heroes, um, Bill Nye, a science guy. Um, shout out to Bill. Um, Bill made you know, science accessible and exciting through his platform. 
through my platform, I aim to do the same. Um, he inspired a generation to care about science and environmentalism and, and physics, all while indulging in dad jokes. <laughs> I think this generation needs more of that, more learning, more inspiration, more action, more desire, more solution-based thinking. You know, as an athlete, I've been able to travel all over the world, meeting people of all walks of life, experiencing the beauty of our planet. And I've already seen through my travels the, the, uh, the evidence that our changing world is here. The science is real. Human activity, the burning of fossil fuels, um, deforestation, you know, the greenhouse gases that affect our atmosphere, leading to a warmer planet. Um, has anybody ever had a fever? What happens when you have a fever? The body heats up. You know, um, what does that tell you? What does that mean when the body heats up? Um, it's trying to heal. Now, Earth is heating up. Um, it releases water. Um, it, we see storms, floods, rising tides, unseasonal rains are all examples of the earth responding, trying to cool itself down, attempting to heal. No different. I take responsibility on the court. I believe we all should take responsibility of our environment. Through strategy, through teamwork, through sacrifice, I think this is essential. I want everybody to close their eyes. Imagine that we're all on the same team. Same arena, same jerseys, you know, and the game is on the line. Now think about this, we're not just playing for ourselves, we're playing for the next generation. Open your eyes. Who is willing to do what it takes to win? To invest, to invest is not just monetary, investing is time, effort, energy, and resources. We need to invest in sustainable communities. We need to invest in clean technology. We also need to invest in education that fosters environmental stewardship. To invest, to invest in our environment is an investment in us. To young people, to young minds who may be listening, when you dream about your future, dream about a future that brings harmony and balance with Earth. You know, to the jobs you choose, to the food you eat, to the energy you invest. Think about how you can bring harmony to our planet rather than taking or extracting from it. Our Earth is at risk. She is slowly being taken advantage of. And the people responsible have names, have companies, have incentives, have egos. This is the city of champions, right? So I think we should all take responsibility and carry a championship mindset in our environment. It starts with us, and we can start a global movement in the future. Nicholas Negro Ponte, uh, a name that you know, some of you guys will be familiar with here at MIT, um, his vision with the, the MIT Media Lab was to create an environment where a bunch of collective minds and subjects can work together. Change doesn't come from one plan, one person, one initiative. It comes from a host of people all working together in unison. So that when I look into the crowd, that's what I see here today. You know, if you haven't got involved in your community and your environment, this speech is your cue. I want to see a movement for climate action. It's not about just us, it's about securing a safe and livable future for our generation, for, for the next generation. We have the power, we have the resources, we have the intelligence. Do we have the willpower? Do we have the desire? Do we have the foresight in order to secure a livable future for the next generation? In closing, the fight for climate change is a response for justice. It is a urgency for the next generation it is a preparation for communities who are ill-prepared, and it is an insistence for us and our values that we hold as human beings. Let's stand together, united in our purpose, with unwavering commitment. The time to act is now.
Thank you.